using containers and callouts. Visio 2013 offers you the ability to group shapes so that you can add structure to your drawings. As you use Visio, you find that you group shapes that you want to keep together in your drawing. That way, if you move one, you move them all. It saves time over moving them one at a time and that saves aggravation. That said, however, you are the only one who knows when you group shapes together. Nobody else can see the grouping because the border around the group becomes invisible. In addition, you can't add other shapes to the group without ungrouping, then regrouping. That can quickly become a hassle as well. In this session, we'll explore why visible structure is important. Containers versus group shapes. Adding containers. Adding shapes to containers. Formatting containers. Using callouts. And associating callouts with shapes. We're going to spend this lesson talking about containers and lists. Both of these things give you a way to add visible structure to your drawings. Visible structure is as important as any other aspect of your drawing. It's as important as connecting shapes together in a flowchart. It's as important as adding shape data to rack diagrams or floor plans. It's as important as organising your shapes on your page so that it looks like a flowchart or diagram, and not a jumbled mess. When you add visible structure to your drawings, you're guiding viewers where to look and what to look at. You're saying, here is this information, and over here is where you'll find that. Even the most organised flowchart can be overwhelming to look at. By adding structure using containers and lists, you make it simpler. You make it more attractive, and you make it more effective. Throughout this entire course, we've taught you how to create diagrams and flowcharts, then organise them. You can think of all that as the cake. The methods we're going to learn in this lesson to create the visible structure is the icing. Before we go any further in this lesson, perhaps it's important to further clarify the differences between containers and group shapes. It will be helpful to know the differences as we move forward in this lesson, as well as for when you use Visio 2013. Containers are collections of shapes that have a visible border around them, while group shapes have an invisible border. If you delete a container, you delete the shapes in that container. You can't delete a group, you can only ungroup shapes. When you move a container, the shapes move with it. The same holds true for group shapes. If you copy and paste a container, you can also copy and paste shapes. You can copy and paste a group as well. Containers have headings, meaning you can add a text label. Groups do not. You can choose a container style to customise the look of your container. Group shapes, again, have an invisible border. It's easy to add containers. The first part of the process is like grouping shapes, so it will seem familiar. Start out by selecting the shapes that you want to contain. Go to the Insert tab and click on Container. You can hover your mouse over the styles to see a preview of each container on the page. Click on a style from the container drop down menu to apply it. Type in the heading for the group of shapes. If you don't have any shapes selected when you add the container, the container is placed in the middle of the view. It will not contain any shapes. You can add a shape to a container by dragging the shape and dropping it inside the container. When a shape inside a container is selected, the container glows slightly, letting you know it is a contained shape. If you don't see the container glowing when a shape in it is selected, move the shape a little. You can also add the shape to the container by right clicking on the shape and then going to the container and then add to underlying container. Visio 2013 gives you tools to format your containers so they look like you want. To format a container, first select the container. You'll then see the container tools format tab appear on the ribbon. Under this tab, you can set the margins for your container, resize the containers, change the style of the container which will also change the appearance, lock the container. This means that shapes cannot be added to the container or deleted from it. Select the contents means all the shapes in the container are selected. Disband container means that the selected container is deleted but the shapes it contained are left behind. You can also go to the home tab and use the paragraph tools to set the position of the header or the font tools to format the header and the text. A callout is an annotation shape. It describes other shapes in a drawing. A callout can be associated with a shape and will move with the shape if the shape is moved. Let's learn how to use a callout. First, select a shape that you like to associate with the callout. Next, go to the Insert tab and click on Callout. Choose a style of callout that you'd like to use with this shape. You can hover your mouse over a callout and see a preview of how it will look in your drawing. Click on a callout to select and associate it with your shape. 
You can add a callout to your page without selecting a shape. When you do this, the callout appears in the middle of your current view. Let's do this by inserting a new callout. To associate a callout with a shape, click on the yellow control handle for the callout, as you can see here. Drag it to the shape that you want to associate it with. Drop the control handle onto the shape. It is very important that the control handle is dropped on the shape and not on the border or near the shape. This is the only way to associate a callout with a shape. Now you can just move the text part of the callout to where you want to.